Consider a cable attached to two poles at its ends. Hanging from the cable are three concentrated loads. The cable sags under the applied loads, forming a stable configuration in which the conditions of static equilibrium are maintained. Assuming that the horizontal distances between the loads and the support points are known, we can describe the shape of the cable using four heights. Let's label them H1 through H4. The analysis of such a cable requires calculation of the reaction forces at A and E, the tension force in each segment of the cable, and the unknown heights, if there are any. A general approach for analysing this cable, or any cable system subjected to a series of concentrated loads, is to determine the reaction forces and unknown heights before determining the tension forces in the cable. Viewing the two ends of the cable as pin connections, four unknown support reactions are present. There are two unknown forces at each end of the cable. Additionally, there are up to four unknown heights. Therefore, in order to completely analyse this cable system, we must determine up to eight unknowns. Considering the free body diagram of the entire system, we can write three equilibrium equations. The sum of the forces in the x direction must be zero, the sum of the forces in the y direction must be zero, the sum of the moments, say about point A, must be zero. We can generate three additional equations using the sum of the moments about each interior joint. For joint B, if we cut the cable in segment BC, summing the moments about the joint gives us this equation. For joint C, the moment equilibrium equation can be written as and for joint D, we can write. As you can see, for this cable system, we have six equilibrium equations. Therefore, we can calculate up to six unknowns. In order to be able to determine the support reactions, we need to know two of these heights. Suppose we know the maximum amount of sag and the position of the right support. That is, we know H2 and H4. Say, H2 equals 0.5 meter and H4 equals 0. Substituting 0.5 for H2 and 0 for H4 in these equations, they simplify to... Now we can determine EY using this equation. This equation can then be used to determine AY. Knowing AY, we can use this equation to calculate AX. Then H1 can be calculated using this equation. And H3 can be obtained from this equation. Finally, this equation gives the value for EX. Knowing the support reactions and all the heights, we are now ready to calculate the tension force in each segment of the cable. For segment AB, we can determine the tension force by finding the vector sum of reaction forces at point A. But why should the tension in the cable be equal to the reaction force at A? For the system to be in equilibrium, the sum of the forces at A must be zero. Since the resulting reaction force and tension force in the cable are the only forces present at joint A, they must add up to zero. Similarly, we can determine the tension force in segment DE by calculating the vector sum of the reaction forces at point E. To determine the force in segment BC, we can focus on the free body diagram of the system to the left of joint C. Since this subsystem has to be in equilibrium, it follows that the sum of the forces in the x direction must be zero. Solving this equation for TBC, we get... And to determine the force in segment CD, let's consider the free body diagram of the subsystem to the left of joint D. For this free body diagram, we can write... 
Solving this equation for TCD, we get Here are the calculated tension forces in the cable. To summarize, given a cable system with N joints and N minus 2 concentrated loads positioned at heights H2 through H N minus 1, we can write three equilibrium equations for the system as a whole. Furthermore, we can write one equilibrium equation for each interior joint. Since there are N minus 2 such joints, we end up with a total of 3 plus N minus 2 or N plus 1 equations. The cable system has four support reactions and a total of N minus 1 unknown heights. Therefore, we could have up to N plus 3 unknowns. However, since the number of equations is two fewer than the maximum number of unknowns, we need to know two of the heights in order to determine the rest of the unknowns. Once all these unknowns are determined, we can use an equilibrium equation at each interior joint of the system to calculate the tension forces in the cable. Let's use this process to solve the two exercise problems from the previous lecture. We wish to analyze the cable system shown here. Since n, the number of joints, equals 5, we can write n plus 1 or 6 equilibrium equations. Notice that we have a total of 6 unknowns. There are 4 unknown support reactions and 2 unknown heights. We start by writing 3 equilibrium equations for the system as a whole. If we cut segment BC and draw the free body diagram of the left subsystem, we can write this equilibrium equation. Furthermore, if we cut segment CD, we can write and if we cut segment DE, we get Here are our six equilibrium equations. Solving them for the unknowns, we get Knowing the support reactions and all the heights, we can now determine the tension force in each segment of the cable. To determine the tension force in segment AB, we can use the free body diagram of joint A. Since the sum of the forces at the joint must be zero, TAB, must be equal to the vector sum of the reaction forces at A. Similarly, the tension force in segment DE must be equal to the vector sum of the reactions at E. To determine the force in segment BC, we can cut the segment and draw the free body diagram of the subsystem to the left of point C. Since the conditions of equilibrium for the subsystem must be maintained, we can write, solving this equation for TBC, we get, similarly, to determine the tension force in segment CD, we cut the segment and draw the free body diagram of the subsystem to the left of point D. Then, by setting the sum of the forces in the X direction to zero, we can determine TCD. Here are the results of the analysis. In the second exercise problem, we wish to determine W and analyze the cable system shown here. Note that in addition to knowing all the heights, we also know the tension force in segment AB, 130 newtons. We start by drawing the free body diagram of the system. For convenience, we can replace this inclined force with its X and Y components. Since the system consists of four joints, we can write five equilibrium equations to solve for the five unknowns. There are four unknown support reactions and one unknown applied load.
W. Three of these equations are obtained by applying the conditions of equilibrium to the system as a whole. Another equation can be written by cutting segment BD and summing the moments about point B. Lastly, a fifth equation can be written by cutting segment DE and summing the moments about point D. Solving these five equations for the five unknowns, we get... Knowing the support reactions and weight W, we can determine the tension force in each segment of the cable. To determine the force in segment CB, we use joint C. Since the sum of the forces at the joint must be zero, TCB can be written as the vector sum of the two reaction forces at C. The tension force in segment DE can be calculated in the same manner by finding the vector sum of the reaction forces at joint E. To determine the tension force in cable BD, we cut the cable and draw the free body diagram of the subsystem to the left of joint D. Since the subsystem has to be in equilibrium, the sum of the forces in the x direction must be zero. Therefore, we can write Solving this equation for TBD, we get Here are the results of the analysis. We will continue our discussion on the analysis of cables in the next lecture.